Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary from marysnest.com and here on my YouTube channel I share traditional recipes for making nutrient dense foods using simple ingredients and today I'm going to show you how to make a sourdough no knead bread using my foolproof sourdough starter. In an earlier video, I showed you how I made my foolproof rye sourdough starter. And today, that's what we're going to use to make our no-need sourdough bread. And I'll link to that video so that you can see how to make this uh, sourdough starter. Well, as I explained in the sourdough starter video, you take two tablespoons of your rye sourdough starter and you add it to a little bit of uh, rye flour and a little bit of lukewarm water and you make a sponge. You let it sit for between six to ten hours and it'll foam up like this and then it'll be ready to make your no-knead sourdough bread. And all we're going to do is use four and a half cups of uh, bread flour. That's what I've got here, four and a half cups of bread flour and it's just white flour. Any flour that you want to use is fine. Uh, this is organic but it doesn't need to be and then I have one tablespoon of sea salt and I'm just going to put that right in there and then I'm just going to take this and just use my tablespoon here a little to mix that salt up with the flour and then I'm going to transfer this sponge into my bread flour but before I do that I'm going to take two tablespoons of this sponge and I'm going to add it to my little starter. The reason I like this method is because you don't wind up with a big amount of starter. You just have a little tiny bit of starter which you use to make a sponge, this, which you then use for making your sourdough bread. And all you do is take two tablespoons of your sponge and add that to your starter and then you can put that in the refrigerator and this will stay fairly strong for about a week which will allow you to make uh, bread with this for about a week. Uh, if you need to, if you leave it in your refrigerator longer you will need to revive it and I discussed that in the sourdough starter video. So I'm just going to put this lid on and I'm going to put this aside because I'll put that in the refriger refrigerator later and we'll get ready to make our no knead bread. Well the first thing that I'm going to do with clean hands, <laughs> a little flour flying out, I'm just going to make a little well and I'm going to add in two cups of lukewarm water. And this is just filtered water uh, but I have left this out overnight to let the chlorine evaporate because I don't want that to interfere with the sourdough process. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is add in my sponge. And as I said, this is what uh, you make using your sourdough starter, just two tablespoons of it, and you add it to a third of a cup of rye flour and a third of a cup of lukewarm water, and you just let it sit for about six to ten hours, and it foams up beautifully. It's got a wonderfully yeasty smell. And that's what you use to make your no-knead sourdough bread, or any sourdough bread for that matter. And the nice thing is, because it's a small amount, you're not going to get a um, rye flour taste. Now I love rye bread, and I make it often, but uh, for this, I'm just using, as I mentioned earlier, a plain white bread flour and I'm just going to mix this in and the nice thing is if you want you can do this with a mixer but it really is it's a no need and it's going to come together quite quickly at some point I'm going to get in here probably and use my hand but I'm just going to keep mixing this and until I get all of the flour moistened and then we'll move on to the next step. Well I got everything mixed together, took me under a minute to do and remember this is a no knead bread and they do tend to be a little stickier than a regular breads that involve kneading. So if you need to flour your hand or add a little extra flour during the process feel free to do, to do so, that's fine. Uh, this came together nicely so I didn't need to do it this time but I have sometimes in the past. Depends on what the weather is and how much moisture there is and so on and so forth. You just kind of get the feel of it. Well now what we're going to do is cover Cover this bowl with some plastic wrap and then we're going to put it to rest in a warm place undisturbed for about six to eight hours and it'll rise up beautifully and then we'll be ready to go to the next step. 
Well, I've let my dough rise for about eight hours. I had said six to ten that it would take, and it seems to have doubled in, in bulk at, at about eight hours. And now we'll just do the finger test. <laughs> and perfect. What you're looking for is when you poke your fingers in, you don't want the holes to stay completely exactly like what they look like when you put your fingers in, but you also don't want it to completely collapse. You just want something that's in the middle. You put them in, closes a little bit, then you know you're in, in good shape, but you can still see your finger marks, you know you're in good shape. Alrighty, well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flour my board really well, and I'm just going to spread this all out and I'm going to transfer my dough to, to, to this floured board and I'll get ready to shape it into two loaves and we'll go from there. Well this is a beautiful, beautiful dough. Got it all out of the bowl and now I'm going to put it right down on this floured surface, put my bowl down over here and I'm just going to, it's a little sticky, you know, with the way these no needs can be and we're just going to get this into a nice circle so that we can just eyeball it. And we're going to want to cut this into two because this is going to be uh, for two loaves of bread. When I make sourdough, I like to do two loaves at a time. First of all, bread just goes quickly, especially when it's home baked. But also, if you're going to go to the work of, you know, making a sourdough starter and then the um, sponge and whatnot, it's just nice to do two, two loaves. So I'm going to split these in half and then we'll get ready to shape them and uh, make two lovely loaves of bread. Well, I've got these divided into two loaves and now what I'm going to do is just work them to where I'm going to get them into a nice round shape. And we're just going to fold over like this. Nothing, you don't have to go anything fancy. Uh, there's no kneading involved. You know, this is, these are the no-knead breads. So see, we've got to have that seam underneath there. But we just want to keep working it to get it into a nice, nice little round shape. Well, that's coming along beautifully. Yeah, just work it like that with your hands. It's a lovely dough. It's very easy to work with. Nice and nice and soft. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm just going to move this one to the side over here onto the plaster wrap and then I'm just going to work and get this one into uh, a nice, we'll just do fold like that, fold like that, and then back like that, and then we'll just work to get this one into a nice round shape as well and working beautifully and I'll just continue doing this as you see it goes pretty quickly there's not a lot of not a lot of work involved just getting it I'm going to just put a little more flour on my hands there we go let's get that around just bring it towards you like that walk it kind of down your board helps get it into a nice, nice round shape. There we go. And again, I'm going to just transfer this over to the plastic rack because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this dish towel and I'm going to put this right onto my cutting board. And then I'm going to dust this with flour generously because we don't want any of the bread sticking. But this, this cotton dish towel works very well for this next stage. Okay then, I'm just going to transfer my loaves back onto here, onto this cutting board, onto these floured, covering, cutting board that's covered with the floured, well floured dish towel. Oh, look at this. They look beautiful. Oh, they're going to be delicious. <laughs> I'm just going to move them, give them room to expand. Okay, now I'm going to get another dish towel. I'm going to put a little flour on top and get another dish towel, cover them, and let them rest. So I'm just going to put a little flour on the top. Give that a nice little dusting. I don't want anything. I don't want the dish towel that I'm going to cover them in when it's time to rest. 
And let me just do a little over here. Perfect. And now I'm going to cover them with this dish towel and I'm going to let them rest about an hour or two and then we'll put them in the oven and bake them and before you know it we'll have fresh bread. Well I let my loaves rise for another hour. It can take one to two hours uh, but it's very warm in my home right now because we are in the middle of August and it's like 100 degrees outside and so it's about 80 in my kitchen so it only took about an hour for, for these to rise. They look terrific. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use my pancake spatula, I'm going to transfer them from the cutting board onto, uh, I'm going to put one each on a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment and then I've dusted it with some flour. And I'm going to transfer uh, one loaf to this uh, baking sheet and then I'll get ready to put some cuts on the top. Well I've got this tool, it's called a lam and it's uh, like a little razor blade on a stick. It's very sharp and I'm going to just make some cuts on the top of my loaf of bread. Uh, you can also use a very sharp knife uh, or you can let the uh, loaf split naturally but I don't always like to do that because I worry that uh, it could cause some unease, uneven baking. So, but I'm just going to do like this and then over like this, just a little diamond pattern and then over like this and there we go. Perfect. Just maybe take a little bit of this flour that's on here. Just put a little on the top there. Alrighty, well we're going to put this in the oven. It'll probably re be ready in about 30 minutes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I uh, preheated my oven to 307, um, 475 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, after I uh, put the bread in the oven, I'm going to turn it down to uh, 450 and let it bake for about 30 minutes. Well I just took this beauty out of the oven and it smells delicious and it took just about 30 minutes and I know that it's done because we just put these pot holders to the side. I picked it up, it's quite warm but it sounds hollow on the bottom so we're in good shape there and I'm looking forward to it cooling off and enjoying the slice but it's just delightful and that's uh, sourdough bread made with our rye starter and white bread flour. Well this bread is still quite warm and I should probably wait to slice it but I'm just going to go ahead. I'm anxious to see how it looks inside and how it tastes. So I'm just going to give it a nice little cut here on the end. Oh listen to that crust. Ah it sounds like it's going to be delicious. Oh my goodness look at this. Oh, oh it's so light. Ah. Oh. Oh, and the aroma is heavenly. Alrighty, it's, oh, it's quite hot, but I'm going to take a little taste. I don't know if you can see the steam is coming off of it. Mmm. Oh, that is so good. Mmm. It's got a nice flavor. It's not too sour. The crust is delightful, and yet the um, crumb is delightfully light. I'm going to give it another taste. <laughs> mm. Very good. I highly recommend this. Try making this as soon as you can. I think you'll really enjoy it. We've got the rye starter, the white bread flour. We use the rye starter to make the um, sponge and then we use the sponge to make the bread with white bread flour and it's just just delightful. Lovely crumb. I highly recommend it. For the complete recipe for how to make this sourdough bread please visit my website marysnest.com and if you like this video I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you'd like to learn more about traditional foods cooking please subscribe to my channel and be sure to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well that's all for today but I want to thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to having you join me again right here in my Texas Hill Country Kitchen. Now I'm going to go finish this bread. It's delicious. Love and God bless.